Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In the opening paragraph of the Disku de la Method, Discourse on the Method, the renowned 17th century French philosopher, scientist, and mathematician, Rene Descartes said, and if you'll pardon my French, I try to quote the original. Ce n'est pas assez d'avoir l'esprit bon, mais le principal est de l'appliquer bien. It is not enough to have a good mind. The main thing is to use it well. To my mind, this short but succinct observation captures the ethos of our work here at ISIS Malaysia, which is to be relentlessly rooted in the practical and actionable while remaining robust in intellectual vigor. In this vein too, ISIS Malaysia has proudly hosted the Tun Hussein on chair in international studies since 2012. Generously sponsored by the Noah Foundation, the chair has enabled five eminent scholars to make their distinct imprints on knowledge and policy. So on behalf of the Institute, I would like to express our profound appreciation to the Noah Foundation and the family of our Mahum Tun Hussein On for the honor of hosting this chair. Let's give a big round of applause for this. <laughs> Additionally, let me also underscore how honored we are by the presence of Yang Ahmad Brahmat Dato On and I would be remiss if I did not mention how grateful and appreciative we are in hosting again Datin Paduka, Dr. Farida here at ISIS. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, over the past 12 years, the Tun Hussein On Chair has provided scholars a refuge for reflection and independent inquiry. Far from the madding crowd, as the expression says, or if I may borrow another phrase, away from the maelstrom of the immediate. And the beauty is that at the same time, these scholars were encouraged to produce research that was not only policy-oriented, but accessible to the educated public. Hence, as for the ethos of our work, which I alluded to at the outset, I dare say that all five holders of the Tun Hussein On Chair have succeeded in this regard. Allow me to therefore briefly recapitulate their work. The first holder, Dato Dr. Muthaya Alagapa, examined the various models of nation building and explained how Asian countries, including Malaysia, could transition from being largely ethnic nations to civic ones. During this time as a chair, he also convened a study group on Malaysian foreign policy, which witnessed the participation of influential stakeholders from government, businesses, and civil society organizations. The second Tun Hussein On Chair, Professor Anthony Milner, sought to evaluate Malaysian foreign relations through the long arc of history. He found that Malaysia and the entities that preceded it conducted foreign relations in ways that have defied easy analysis by modern theories of international relations. The third holder of the chair was none other than Professor Jomo Sundram. In an astute and insightful examination of Malaysia's economic development, he found that many of the policies adopted in the 1970s, including, of course, during Tun Hussein On's premiership, exemplify the compatibility of growth and redistribution. The fourth holder of the chair was the constitutional law expert, Professor Emeritus Dr. Shat Salim Faruqi, who incidentally was also my law lecturer, I mean back in the 80s. Yep. He elucidated and distilled how the Malaysian constitution provides a pathway towards moderation, compassion, and compromise in our society. Recent events have only highlighted the vital importance of Shard's work in promoting constitutional literacy among the public. 
We now come to the fifth and final holder of the chair, Professor Emeritus Tansri Zakri Hamid, a tireless advocate for the environment. Tansri Zakri has advised governments and international organizations set in order the work of innumerable committees on scientific and environmental cooperation and provided leadership for multiple academic institutions. Tansri Zakri's lecture today concerns the principal challenge of our epoch, and that is the race against time to rescue our planet from the impacts of climate change. He approaches the subject from his deepest end, which is the political tish tussle surrounding the world's collective response to this crisis. The zeitgeist of our era is increasingly marked by a profound concern for the environment, driving policy changes and innovations in renewable energy. Yet, this would come to naught if global cooperation and collective action are not strengthened. The urgency to bridge divides between developed and developing nations is paramount. So is the need for equitable solutions that recognize the varied capacities and historical ambitions of countries. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, it has been some six decades since the publication of Rachel Charson's The Silent Spring, a book, or should I say the book, that launched the modern environmental movement. Carson criticized the post-World War II scientific mindset for its zeal to control nature. She forcefully argued that humans were no more than a component, a component of nature, dependent on the well-being of the entire ecosystem, which requires a firm balance. Carson posed this rhetorical challenge, and I may quote, the question is whether any civilization can wage relentless war on life without destroying itself and without losing the right to be called civilized, unquote. This book, of course, set her on the path headlong against the giant chemical industry, but with the courage of her convictions and the support of those who believed in the imperative of the balance of nature, it finally prevailed. This book, as well as other similar undertakings, underscores the critical importance of building awareness exemplifying the power of combining scientific rigor with a gripping narrative to engage a wide audience. As we face escalating environmental challenges, it is imperative that we communicate complex issues in a manner that is once accessible yet compelling. It is only by fostering an informed and engaged public that we will propel nations to take actions that ensure the health and sustainability of our planet for future generations. While science is crucial in providing us the guideposts in our journey going forward, it is nevertheless not absolute, and without more, won't help us reach our destination. It is not enough to merely have the facts on our side. Much more is needed, the capacity to persuade, to inspire, to mobilize, that is paramount for enlisting public opinion and ultimately spurring action. This goal is at the heart of what we do here at ISIS Malaysia. It is the very reason that we consider it a privilege and indeed an honor to have Tansri Zakri as the fifth and final holder of the Tun Hussein chair. And it is our earnest hope that his perspectives reach a broad audience and inspire action. Thank you.